Welcome to the Shuv Show. Come and let us return to the Lord. Is studying scripture all Greek to you? Maybe it's because you're thinking like a Greek. Time to swap that linear mindset of check boxes and vanishing points and start understanding life like a biblical Hebrew. Concrete, physical action, and cyclical. What has been will be again. Time to walk as Yeshua walked, the Derech HaKodesh, the way of holiness. Time to shuv, to return to the Father's house and his ways. This is the Shuv Show. And he shall come to us as Welcome to the Shuv Show. I'm Christine Jackman, the voice of one crying. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight a highway for our God. Isaiah 40, verse 3. If you look at the Hebrew in this verse, you'll see that it's talking about getting the debris of sin and apostasy off the road of your life. It's about shuv, repentance, a call to come back to walking in the righteous ways of the God of the Bible. In order to know what these righteous ways are, you have to actually read the book, all of it, then do what it says. And you must read it understanding covenant, the Hebraic mindset, the culture and context. How would the author and audience have understood what was being said? Scripture is not a department store of cool lines to lift willy-nilly, scanning its pages for possible book titles and clever sayings for your sermon or speech. Scripture is a tapestry. Context is everything. The spirit and peshat, or plain meaning of the verse, must never be violated, pulled out of context, and cheapened. This Shuv show will discuss pet scripture quotes taken out of context, part one. Tonight, let's look at this extremely common quote, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. How many times have I heard people quoting this verse from Hosea, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, to support their pet issue, from admonishing people for not reading a certain denomination's magazine, to not knowing the true nature of the Masonic Lodge, or not understanding their financial formula, or not eating their particular diet plan, eventually you will hear them quote, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. The reality is, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, of knowledge of the verse from which this quote comes. How many have stopped to first examine exactly what knowledge is being discussed before tearing it out of its Hosea 4 context? Let's go find the original quote from Hosea. We find that, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, is only a small part of the entire verse of Hosea 4 verse 6. Quote, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you from being Cohen, priest, for me, because you have forgotten the Torah of your God, I will also forget your children. See the Hebraic parallelisms? Rejected and forgotten, knowledge and Torah. That means the term knowledge is equivalent to Torah. In Hebrew, Torah means instruction or teaching. It's often translated in English Bibles as law. Foundationally, Torah is the law of Moses. We see within the context of Hosea 4 that it is not knowledge in general being discussed here, but a very specific kind of knowledge. God is confronting the Kohanim, who should have been teaching the people the Torah, the five books of Moses, Genesis through Deuteronomy, which contain the 613 plus commandments of our God. The Ten Commandments, better translated ten words, Devarim, are actually more like categories in which all 613 fit. Messiah Yeshua, Jesus, summarized them down further into two main sections, love God, love your neighbor as yourself. Expansively, Torah means all of Scripture, which contains the Torah, or instructions, of our Creator, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Hosea 4, verse 6, rejected knowledge and forgotten the Torah, reveal exactly what knowledge is meant by my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It is this, let me paraphrase, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of Torah, the good and holy commandments, which are the terms of the covenant found in Genesis through Deuteronomy. In Hosea 4 verse 6, the word shechach 
translated forgotten, means to forget, ignore, and wither. In Hosea's day, the commandments of the Word of God were not all being followed. Knowledge of them was withering, being supplanted by man-made rulings and traditions that were introduced by Jeroboam, son of Nevat, the first king of the divided kingdom, ruling over the house of Israel, or the ten northern tribes. Later, pagan Baal worship was added to the mix thanks to King Ahab and his wife Jezebel. The result was an unclean faith, repugnant to the God of Israel. Time for repentance was given, but repentance was spurned and rebellion won out. Destruction and dispersion is a judgment. Jeroboam is a type and shadow of an unfaithful kingdom. Where do we see this pattern in history and today? Whenever a council of men set aside the word of God in favor of their rulings or takanot, and whenever we see a pagan practice slithered alongside pure worship of the one true God. You see, the commandments matter. They are the terms of the covenant. They were given not as a means to gain salvation or right standing before God, but for a holy covenantal lifestyle, for our good, for our protection. We are to be holy as he is holy. Don't add to them, don't take away, he commanded us. All through history, his people, called by his name, keep making the same mistake, adding and taking away. Enough. Time to get the debris, the stumbling stones, off the road. It's high time we regain the biblical understanding of covenant. It's Hebraic and Near Eastern in its mindset, not Greco-Roman Western. The covenants that God makes are forever covenants. Why? Because blood covenant is until death. God lives forever, so his covenants stand forever. The true nature of covenant is this. Covenants can be renewed, given another layer, but never do these ever abrogate the original covenant. Covenant is not a last will and testament as we understand it today, where the new will tosses out the older version. That means scripture should not be called the Old Testament or New Testament, as the heretic Martian first coined. It's misleading. Rather, scripture, Genesis through Revelation, should be called the covenant. Now, covenants come with terms. The Torah is the constitution of Israel and those joined to her through faith in the Messiah. The 613 plus mitzvot commandments found in Genesis or Deuteronomy are the terms of that constitution. They are the lifestyle of the bride, the redeemed community. Surely God has the right to set down operating instructions for the universe. It's his house. Israel and her Messiah Yeshua are to be a light to the fallen world, to bring them back into proper covenant relationship with the Creator. And no, a council of men cannot set aside the written word of God. In 363 to 364 AD, the council of Laodicea outlawed the biblical Sabbath, which had been on the seventh day from creation, and switched its sanctity and observance to first day, or Sunday. They had no right to do this. Do you see the pattern of Jeroboam in their actions? In reality, the seventh-day Sabbath is a sign of the covenant. So how can it be abrogated? Hear what our God says in Exodus 31. Quote, and the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak also to the children of Israel, saying, Surely my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. You shall keep the Sabbath. Therefore, for it is holy to you. Everyone who profanes it shall surely be put to death. For whoever does any work on it, that person shall be cut off from among his people. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, the Sabbath, to ob observe the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And when he had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, 
he gave Moses two tablets of the testimony, tablets of stone, written with the finger of God. Pretty straightforward. And a council of men had no right to command believers to stop keeping the Moedim, the appointed times or feasts of the Lord, as are found in Leviticus 23. After all, they're prophetic. They're memorial feasts and they're prophetic. Here's a little history lesson. Quote, The first council of Nicaea was a council of Christian bishops convened in Nicaea in Bithynia by the Roman Emperor Constantine I in A.D. 325. This first ecumenical council was the first effort to attain consensus in the church through an assembly representing all of Christendom. Another result of the council was an agreement on when to celebrate Easter, the most important feast of the ecclesiastical calendar, decreed in an epistle to the church of Alexandria, in which it is simply stated, We also send you the good news of the settlement concerning the holy Pasch, or Passover, namely that in answer to your prayers this question also has been resolved. Okay, now get this. All the brethren in the East who have hitherto followed the Jewish practice will henceforth observe the custom of the Romans and of yourselves and of all of us who from ancient times have kept Easter together with you. End quote. By the way, the word Easter is another name for the pagan fertility goddess Ishtar. That's why you see the practice of rabbits laying eggs. Oh, it's an homage to pagan religious ritual. Should a believer be attached to idolatry? Of course not. We are to be holy. God commanded us. Anti-Semitism and compromise are the twin evil roots that motivated this deviation from the Word of God. For hundreds of years after Yeshua's death and resurrection, his followers kept the feasts of the Lord and the Sabbath on their appropriate times as dictated by God himself. Now we see they're commanded to follow the, quote, custom of the Romans, unquote. Rulings from councils of men who had left the faith, leaving in their wake a Jeroboamic mingle mess of lie and truth. Once you wrap your brain around how God looks at covenant, your paradigms will shift. We're talking earthquake. But homes built on sand should fall. It's time to stand on the rock. It's time to say no to lawlessness and yes to practicing holiness. Why are you hanging on to traditions of men that set aside the word of God? It never ends well for us when we do that. Look at what happened to Jeroboam's kingdom, horribly destroyed, her people scattered to the four winds, as they still largely are to this day. What happened so long ago? How did we get so far off the path of righteousness that Messiah Yeshua himself walked, living out the written Torah? For hundreds of years, his Talmudim, his disciples, copied his lifestyle, obeying the law of Moses, the Torah, before and after his resurrection. A faction strayed from the way, twisting Paul's words, as Peter warned us they would, advocating tossing out many of the laws of God. How does this happen? Well, Scripture tells us, there's nothing new under the sun. What has been is that which will be. I think the answer is found in Hosea 6, verse 12. A spirit of harlotry has caused them to stray. The whole verse is this, My people ask counsel from their wooden idols, and their staff informs them. For the spirit of harlotry has caused them to stray, and they have played the harlot against their God. Hosea 4, verse 6 says it all. Allowing knowledge of the Torah, the law of God, allowing it to wither, has left us open, just like Jeroboam's kingdom, to judgment and attack by the enemy of our souls. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge of Genesis through Deuteronomy, the Torah, God's instructions. If you know Torah, you'll be able to discern false prophets and false signs and wonders. If you know Torah, you'll be able to understand the times. If you know Torah, you'll be able to see when God is sending an oat, a signal for a heads up. If you know Torah, you'll realize that God tells us the end from the beginning. No way can you interpret Revelation divorced from the Tanakh, Genesis through Malachi. If you know Torah, you see the heart of God. If you know Torah, you see the Messiah, the living Torah, and the holy lifestyle of the bride.
Yeshua warned us that before his return, the world would be like the days of Noah and the days of Lot, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah. Our Creator defines good and evil in his word. But these days, good is called evil and evil is called good. Remember, God does have a line in the sand, and I fear we have crossed it. How tragic and dangerous it is when the very ones who claim that they know him toss out most of his holy instructions or laws because of a wrong premise. What hope is there for the world if the people who are called by his name have no clue that they cling to wicked ways that need to change? Few know that true repentance involves coming back to doing things God's way and not our denomination's idea of what that is. True repentance means walking in the commandments, all of them. Genesis through Revelation, out of a grateful heart, trusting in His righteousness and mercy, expressed through the gift of His Son, Yeshua, whose name means salvation. One last thought. Consider this verse from Revelation 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are those who do His commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter through the gates into the city. But outside are the dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. That phrase, practices a lie, has religious overtones to it in the Greek. It's talking about false religion. Who are those that do his commandments? The redeemed community, out of love and gratitude. By keeping his commandments, you demonstrate your faith, recognize the sovereignty of the Creator and the Savior, who by his free will offering death, delivered you from the avon, the consequence of iniquity, death. Yeshua HaZadik, the Righteous One, our Goel, Redeemer, by whose blood we can cross the threshold and enter, forgiven and restored, back into the Father's house. The next move is yours. Will you remain a partially lawless disciple of your denomination, clutching your nearly empty oil lamp because you just can't let go of your tradition? Or will you shuv, repent, and become a mature disciple, a Talmud of, or Talmudah of Yeshua, HaMashiach, the Messiah? Will you let the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, pour oil into your lamp and jars by writing the Holy Torah, His commandments, upon your heart? He will then empower you to desire and to walk in them. Salvation by grace through Messiah Yeshua, lifestyle by Torah. Torah, the lifestyle of the redeemed community, the bride of Messiah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Baruch Abba B'Shem Adonai. Yeshua HaMashiach, King and Cohen on the throne of David. A covenantal promise that will surely come to pass even swiftly and soon, and say, Amen. This has been the Shuv Show. Thank you for listening. Lila Tov. Good night. That wraps it up for this edition of the Shuv Show. Don't forget to visit shuvshow.com, S-H-U-V is in virtue, shuvshow.com for archived shows, details on my music, and the Shuv Store. Thank you for listening to the Shuv Show. I'm Christine Jackman, and we'll derosh again. Till then, Shalom Aleichem. We invite you to listen to The Shoe Show with Christine Jackman. If you appreciate the music and the work of Christine Jackman, please consider shopping her tent-making endeavor. Shoestore.com Shoe, S-H-U-V as in virtue, Shoestore.com At Shoestore.com you'll find the music and videos of Christine Jackman that focus on calling the bride to shoe, to return back to the Father's house and his Derech HaKodesh, the way of holiness. Also available at Shoestore.com You'll find unique messianic gifts, zitziot, trendy posters, worship tabrets by warrior brides, e-books, and more. Stop back often to see what new product we've added. Thank you for standing behind the messianic creative community. Visit today, shoestore.com, shuv, S-H-U-V as in virtue, shoestore.com. Toda Thank you.